Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to A City Skylines Let's Play. We are back here in Bayview Heights and we have our mayor, Ryan Fitzpatrick. He got our city off to a really, really good start. But recently, he hired a city planner named Frank Sinclair. Frank here has five years of city plan experience. So Ryan Fitzpatrick brought Frank in to help us overcome our early challenges in city skylines. So what we're gonna do is we are going to upgrade our education. We're gonna clean up some of our utilities. We're gonna add some parks, expand residential, and just overcome any problems that usually pop up early on in your city skyline city. Let's get started. So welcome back to Bayview Heights. And in our last video, we got up to a tiny town. For this video, we wanna to get to a boom town. The reason behind that is Frank Sinclair wants to expand our city out to this tile. So we need Mayor Ryan Fitzpatrick to eventually buy that tile so we can expand. And as you can see in front of you, one of the first hurdles Frank has encountered is that we are consuming about 41 to 42 megawatts of power. And what we need to do is we need to actually add another source of power. So what I just what we decided to do was to add another coal plant. Now we did waste a little bit of money here by moving the first coal plant and move it onto that road. On top of Frank's job of a city planner, he wants to also make the surrounding area a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So getting that original coal plant off our main road and just off the highway so we don't have to necessarily see it from a major highway, that was one of the things that Mayor Ryan Fitzpatrick really wanted, just to make the city look a little nicer. Now the next problem that came up that Frank Sinclair had to encounter was education. Our education system is kind of garbage right now. Our elementary school, we have not enough student, we have not enough capacity for our elementary school and we don't even have a high school and we have 286 people that, well, I should say kids that are eligible. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to start by actually getting rid of all these darn trees. I mean, I, if anybody saw episode one, you're gonna notice that trees have been my bane of my existence and have been really annoying. But now that we unlock the terrain tool, we can easily get rid of these trees. So now that we have a clean palette, by clean palette means no trees in the way, what I would like to start to do is I want to start to lay out more residential area, but I want to have an area where we have a school in mind. So what we'll do is we will drag down a road 23 units. And what we're going to try to do here is we need to figure out how well we need to grid this up and we're gridding this up because well, we're still early on. We are still, if, if this was a child we are six months into having a child our city is very 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 young but over here we have expanded our grid and this little it's not a rectangle but this this oddly shaped road what i would like to do is build a elementary school mixed with a high school now in the united states a lot of our high schools and elementary schools are actually built right next to each other, at least where I live in New York State in the United States. So that's something to keep in mind that this is actually somewhat common in my area. So, you know, just, just something to think about. That's, that's all I'm saying. So what I did right there was I plopped down a high school because we needed it. And then I decided to plop down an elementary school right there. Now you can see that I kind of like where we're starting and why we're doing that because I have an idea of what, what we could do detailing wise. Now you can see that there is that slight gap, but you can see, hey, we have a low happiness level in our city. And what that, how you solve that is by parks. And well, clearly we just unlock parks in our city um, with the tiny town. But what we'll do eventually is you'll see that green radius. That is all the houses that will be affected by the park that we create. And you can see here, there is a leisure legend. What I mean by a legend is it shows you that red means we need it. And blue means blue into green means that they're happy. So you saw a lot of red before we added any parks. So what I wanted to do was I wanted, since we don't have any fields unlocked or anything like that, 
what I wanted to do, like, by fields, I mean, like, athletic fields. Like, we can't add a baseball stadium, football stadium. We don't have that unlocked yet. So, for the time being, we're kind of doing what... We're, we're working with what we have. And what we have is actually not that much. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to add a large playground. And you can see, it's really cool that it comes with dirt paths already and a jungle gym and stuff like that. So, what we'll do is, since we unlocked the boom, tiny, tiny town, I should say is we now have dirt paths while well, we have paths in general you can see right in front of you we have multiple paths so basically all of our paths just were unlocked so what i'm doing here is i'm adding different ways for students to go in and out of that large park and what basically what i wanted to do was i just didn't want to plop down the park and just or I should say, I didn't want to just plop down our high school and our elementary school and just be like, all right, we're done. That's it. We're done. Like, you know, I didn't, I honestly did not want that. So adding that little park there, I thought absolutely worked perfect. So now that we have behind our school, a little detail. I mean, we just added a path and a park, nothing honestly too crazy. What I wanted to do next was if you did update your base city skylines game, you had these brand new parking lots that you're able to add to your city skyline city. Everybody has these council players. If you have no DLCs, you still have those parking lots. So I wanted to add those parking lots. Um, again, in the United States, there are a ton of schools that have parking lots in front of the, their entrances or even on the side. So parking lot as American, we love parking lots. So the next thing we wanted, I wanted to do was we had this gap. We had this ugly gap. And a lot of times in the United States, between schools or just with schools in general, they do have kind of a courtyard or a place where people can sit outside and congregate, maybe do some homework outside. Um, and I figured that courtyard right between the school was absolutely perfect. And I, I do love it there. I did move it a smidge with move it. Now, if you're playing on console, you don't have the move it mod, but I don't think you really need it. I just, it, it did fit. I just wanted to move it like a smidge by a smidge. I mean, just a very small amount. So what we're going to do next is to make it, we're going to tidy this up and bring it all together. We are going to add trees to this entire I guess we'll call it our, our school complex because it's a high school and an elementary school. Now, when you're adding trees, make sure you add a bunch of different trees, not just the same one, because the reason behind that is in real life, how often do you just see one of the same tree? It's always different ones. So anyways, now you can see on the screen in front of you, we have students going to high school and using our elementary school, which is absolutely fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted to do and very happy about our start so far. So you're gonna see at the bottom of the screen, we have a very, very, very like maxed out demand for more residential. So what I'm doing is I use the, um, I just added some more zoning into our city and you know, just basically added more residential zoning so we could have that really fill in. Like our goal for our next boom town is 5,000 and we're only at 2,030. So obviously we are going to need Oof, a massive, ma we're, we're gonna over double our population before we level up, which is absolutely insane. So now what we wanna do next is we want to actually start to do something. And what we wanna do is I wanna start to upgrade these roads into collectors. So I'm gonna have a few different roads in our city, Skyline City, that are gonna be our main roads that we're hoping cars do go down and use as a priority road. And what I'm doing is I'm speeding this up because, well, A, I started to upgrade all the roads. Then we ran out of money. So what happens is, is if you go to the budget and you go over to loans, you can use the Global Credit Incorporator, incorporate, yeah, to, oh my God, to get $60,000 and it's only a weekly cost of interest of 253000 or, well, whoa, that would be way too many, $253. So instead of me just showing off me upgrading all these roads, what I wanted to do was I just wanted to, I'm in a snap of a finger, we are going to be done. And bing, bang, boom, everything has been upgraded. The next thing I did wanna show you, since we did unlock paths, I do wanna show you that 
we that those gaps we left open in residential they're actually going towards something so the reason behind all of these paths is Sims love to walk. And I just quickly went through that and I did it myself. I did not want you guys to watch me do that for five minutes on screen, but I do want to let you know that Sims love, love, love to walk. So if you have paths, they will use them. You know, obviously they do love our basic transportation, but if they can walk somewhere, definitely keep that in mind. Paths, they love using paths. So what we're doing next is we realized early on that we needed more recreation space and park space to make our residents happy. So this part of the build, I did decide to just use the generic by, by generic, just mean the normal parks. There's no, there's little to no customization to this park. We just honestly plopped it down. And what we're going to do is we're going to plop down a couple more parks in this area. I, and just place them down. You can see the blue means they're happy. And the red means they need more parks. So just for symmetrical purposes, um, you can see here the green halo and stuff like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to just place down a couple more parks in this different parts of our city so that, you know, we can bring up more. I, I think we that's what we're, we're going to call it. We're going to bring up sim morale just by doing this. Like you can see all the red and, you know, just if you placing these parks is kind of a pain because you're trying not to destroy your city. But again, like, look at, you can see all the smiley faces from the parks and the radius themselves. So we'll place one there and probably one in this general area, um, in the, around this turn. Now, it, you know, since these parks are generally like rectangular or square, like it is kind of hard to place them down. It, it is easier just to make them. But um, we're just going to plop that there for now, and we'll get to it, guys. Oh, Boomtown. Okay, wait a second. Boomtown was 26. Oh, wow. I, I honestly completely misjudged the Boomtown. It was 2,600, and we did achieve that. We did unlock the tile. Well, we can actually buy a tile. And then we unlocked transport. We unlocked the ore industry. We unlocked actually a lot. Holy cow. Oh, we finally have a highway, so we can actually create a highway. Wow, Frank Sinclair, you have a lot of work to do. So we have a lot of roads unlocked. We have trams, transportation. We have a lot to do. Okay, so the busy town is 5,000. Ah, see, I, I was mixing up. So 2,600 was the boom town, and our next goal is 5,000. So Frank Sinclair went to our mayor. Ryan Fitzpatrick and said, we need to buy more land west of Bayview Heights. And by west, I mean to the left. And you can see the tile to the left. That is definitely something we are trying to do because our downtown area, Frank and Ryan Fitzpatrick both agree that our downtown area is going to be across the way in that little lakeside part of our city. So Frank, use some of that money you have. We have four... He has $47,247 and that new tile, that new land is going to cost us $2,800. And you can see we, wow, we really don't have any connections with that. Wow. That's a little, it's a little weird, but it says we have a plane connection, which is weird. But anyways, um, at the top, we do have the option for the trains, but to our left, that is where we want to buy our tile. So Mayor Ryan Fitzpatrick bought us our new tile and we are ready to build and expand. And this is really exciting because, well, this is going to be major, major expansion for our city of Bayview Heights. So guys, we know what we're going to do next. We are going to start to expand this area, but the very first thing we need to do is we need to increase that brush size and get rid of all the trees to clear the palette. I... Personally, from a city skylines point of view, let me know in the comment section below, guys. Like, from a city skylines point of view, do you like to clear the trees, then re-add them, or do you just keep building over them? That's Please let me know in the comment section below how you feel about that. And the very next thing we are going to do is we're going to build a highway intersection. Now, Frank Sinclair mentioned this to our mayor, Ryan Fitzpatrick. He said, look, look. Look, Ryan, you created an 
industry or like a generic industrial site. And the problem is, is it creates a lot of traffic and we do need to have a way to get traffic in and out of our city without messing with our, not messing, but interfering with our residential residents. So the very, one of the very first big projects that Ryan Sinclair had was to build the city skylines intersection. And he basically went with a, it's almost like a diverging diamond without the diverging. No, it's just, it's probably the, this is probably the simplest city skylines entrance that you could possibly build. So you can see right there, we have that overpass that was built really perfectly. What we'll do next is move that overpass a little bit closer. So we use the movement mod to move the interpass a little closer to our highway. So we're going to create the smallest intersection possible in city skylines. So what we're gonna do next is we need to get over to our highway tool. And what we're gonna do next is just create on and off ramps for this highway off, well, highway intersection. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to connect the traffic going north. I'm only saying it's north because, well, it, we're going straight up. So what we're gonna do first is we need to figure out how to connect the highway nicely like if we just connected in red it would not look good but what we'll do is go 12 units out so we went actually excuse me 23 units out then we're gonna go up and we're, we do have the the freeform tool and then we're just gonna connect it six units to the left and we it does look very tidy it looks good actually that looks very for just free handing this it honestly looks really, really good. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other end. So we're gonna do 23 units. Try to get it as best as possible. I will let you know that the freeform tool is a little finicky. So as you can see here, we're just going very, very, very slowly and just waiting for our guidelines to go straight. And like we just did, we clicked down and then we went six units to the right. Now you're gonna see it's it's a, they're pretty even if you really want to, you know, just mess with it, you can, but you know, it's, it's okay. So we're doing this on all four sides. So again, 23 units, click left click and make sure we're going down, make sure it's down on the ground. So left click and we're getting there. And then what we'll do is with the free form tool, go six units to the left and it automatically connects up really sharp. So guys, I would honestly say that this is probably the easiest intersection in city skylines to possibly create. And it's also the smallest because look, we're not really using that much space in hindsight. So 23 units down, make sure you're taking your time, make sure it's straight, make sure it's down and on the ground and then click over that six units. Very, very, very simple. So Frank Sinclair, I mean, I really do like your very first major expansion in city skylines in our Bayview Heights. Now, what we do need to do is I am gonna speed this up, but all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upgrade each of these roads. And the only thing I'm upgrading is the direction of which way the road is actually going. So in this way, hey, people can actually use this on an off ramp. And this is going to be amazing amazing for our industry traffic and this is going to alleviate a lot of future traffic that was on our original intersection so you're going to see that the road did tear a little bit by tearing you could see like next to the roads that there is a cliff side so what we're going to start to do is i am going to speed this up but i'm just going to show you to start this off i do want to add these stones um just next to you know just in front of the tearing basically so we want it to we're trying to add a little bit of realism to this city skylines interchange. And now, now that I've bored you enough, I am going to increase the speed. So we are tripling the speed of the video that you're seeing just so that you're not here all day. Essentially, I don't want to bore you guys to death. Then the next thing I did want to do is we couldn't fit the rocks where that was torn, like that part of the intersection was torn the road up. So what I did was I added bushes and as you can see right there on the screen, like those rocks just didn't fit. So what I did next was I added a few other different bushes to kind of fill that in, just to fill in the loose ends that, you know, just didn't, didn't the big bushes didn't filled in. So I just used a much smaller bush just to fill that in, just to provide some more realism like this. 
you know, Intersection has been here a few years rather than just being built five minutes ago, which I think was kind of funny. But you can see here the detailing is really well done. I'm a big fan of using those small bushes and the rocks together. Overall, this intersection looks great and I really do love um, that we are able to use it. Now, if you really want, you can use the line intersection marking tool to add those lines. I don't wanna add those in yet because, well, we have a limited amount of time and I just don't want you guys to be here forever. So now let's keep going on with our next part of our build. So in front of you, we are going to see that we are going to, we do want to expand our industrial area only to about where the bottom part of that landfill is. But we have a problem. Frank Sinclair, we have a death in our city, Skyline City, and that is not good. So we don't have death care. And, you know, that's one of the problems that came up. Well, the reason why the problem honestly came up was, well, we actually hit our... <laughs> We hit our milestone and the cemetery actually unlocked. So we do have two open, I would call these open cemeteries because the crematorium is kind of like a closed building. So these open land cemeteries, they do fill up. We do have 10 hearse, which is really nice. That's a lot of hearse. And then we have three different hearse options, which, oh, not enough water. <laughs> well, they do need water, but um, apparently dead people need water. Did you, no, did you guys like that joke? No, okay. Okay, I was just making sure that that was just, that wasn't just me. So anyways, we're adding water to our cemetery. So that is how you handle death care is by building cemeteries. Now, now I do want to add something very, just very simple. You guys can just call me unrealistic, but there is that like gap. I figured just putting a path there would just be perfect. And I did add a path with trees. Now I know, I know. I know this ahead of time that those trees are in the wall, but I just thought those trees, you know, on the path, I thought they actually worked. I don't know. Please let me know guys in the comment section below. I thought that path worked out really well. That's just, that's just my opinion. Just let me know in the comment section below. So now that you see there is a dead body and you can see the Hearst is snagging it up and there we go. We have death care and we have bodies being moved from those commercial buildings. So the next thing we want to do is we unlocked transportation. Tra wow, transportation. Let's speak English. So right now we actually don't have money for it. So we're, we're going to take out a quick loan and eventually we will be starting to make a lot of money, but that is coming soon. We've, we've just been, we've been doing some expensive building. All right, Frank Sinclair, that highway interchange was a very, very expensive so what we need to do first when adding the bus lines is we have the bus depot. So the bus depot enables us to create the bus lines themselves. So basically this is how the buses, this is, you know, when you create a bus line, this is where the buses actually come from for those bus lines. So now that we have a bus depot in place, Hey, we don't have much money, but at least when you're creating a bus line, it's not going to cost us any money. <laughs> It's free. It's free to add bus lines. Now, is it free to run the buses? No, but is it free to create the bus lines? It is free to create bus lines. So right now we don't have a bus hub unlocked also, which we couldn't build because we don't have any money. So what I did was I started to speed up the simulation and we needed to make money. So that's why I started to speed everything up while we are creating the bus lines. So what you're going to see on the screen in front of you is me creating one of the bus lines. So this is going to be a residential area bus line. And the reason we want it, you, you want to kind of spread out your bus stops, but where that they're sort of spread out, but they're not too close. You got to kind of find that happy medium. So what I'm doing over here is I'm just creating a residential bus route and you can see right there in the center, complete bus line. And once that is complete, we have a bus line going from left to right. So we'll call that clockwise because if you've ever looked at a clock, that is the direction of the clock. So you can see there we have one bus line. And what we could do with that bus line is we can change the color of the bus, which I wanted a dark blue. And it's more of a purple to be honest with you, but dark blue, purple, whatever. And we'll call it residential one. So you can title some of your um, bus line just to remember what they are actually doing. So now that we have our, our clockwise 
Yeah, ooh, that's a one-way road. So we can't actually build a bus on that road. So what we're gonna do clockwise is use the other road and go the opposite direction. So this way, like when I'm creating bus lines and city skylines, I like having a bus go clockwise then have it counterclockwise. So this way it's just, a, it's more efficient. I, I think that's the best way to put it. Just, it's a more efficient way to use your buses and your bus lines and stuff like that. So what we'll do is we need to finish off the bus line. I was just trying to see if we have any additional place we can put it, but let's just complete the bus line. And there we go. We have our second one. So again, we have what we, what you can do is make it a different color so you can distinguish which bus you're actually do, using. And since this is a residential one, we'll call it residential two. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to speed this up. I don't wanna bore you again with another bus line. And what I'm doing is I'm speeding this up. So we're going three speed. And just all we're doing is, is we're creating a an industrial bus line. So then this way we have people that are going to work and um, well, using them to get to work. And we'll just call it industry one and industry two, make them red. And what you could do is you can actually go in to each individual line and you could see how many buses are being used. So three for this bus line, you could see which passenger count is, well, which passenger stop is really um, just busy. And then you can see we have a bunch of different buses for capacity. Ours originally starts out at 30. And as you go down the list, you can go up to 115 per bus, which is absolutely insane. I don't... I don't know if I've ever had that many buses before, like needed literally a hundred and fifty. I don't even know. Have you? I don't know. I don't think I've ever done that before. But anyways, you can retitle your bus line, name it whatever you want. But it's really cool to see the bu different bus details. And as you can see on the screen in front of you, we have people using our bus line, which is absolutely amazing. You can see over here, our most popular popular bus line, you click on it and you can see which one it is and it's in our residential neighborhood. So that's really cool that people are starting to use transportation and just, you know, just basically getting around town, getting to school, getting to work. And so far everything is going really well. So Frank Sinclair, very proud of you, Frank. Really nice job so far. So what we'll do next is we do have demand for our industry and see this industrial area right here. I do want to let you know is we're not going to get much bigger than what you see in front of you industry wise. You don't want to make industry too big to where it's you have way too much traffic and it just becomes a nightmare. Like you can see on the screen in front of you, like we're, we're, it's going to, it's a lot. Basically it's a lot. So we're going to let that fill in that industry. And that's probably the most we're ever going to build and, as you can see, it is raining, and if you do have the play it mod, you can actually make it stop raining. Anyways, what we're going to do next is we did expand our residential off camera a little bit because we do need to hit that 5,000 resident um, milestone. So what I wanted to do over here was I wanted to build our first city park. Well, I, I shouldn't call it a city park, but it's our first city skylines park life dlc park and what i wanted to do was i wanted to build a nature reserve now you can see in front of you we do have we do have to name the nature reserve itself but it's called more park for the time being so we're going to go over and actually start to create the nature preserve the reason behind that is because you can see that it's a very rocky ledge and it's like if we added a city park it would make no sense like i feel like you can go hiking we can build really cool bridges we can have campfires we can just it would be a really cool nature reserve that's my personal opinion so when you are first building a city skylines park life dlc you're going to need to build that put down a main building and then that will unlock a few different items not everything is unlocked right now but you can tell we do have a bunch of different items uh, mainly just tents and campfires so far but that's okay so you can see in front of you, that is our main gate. And now that we zoom in, we want to boost that ticket price to $20. We have zero visitors, but somehow that main gate gave us 104 entertainment. I That's it's a little weird. It's a little weird. How the heck did we get 104 entertainment just by having a main gate? But whatever. City Skylines, you do you. And if you want to give me 104 entertainment off the bat, 
fine by me. So over here, I, I did want to add a side gate because this is going to be a pretty big, um, you know, just a pretty, pretty big nature reserve. Like I want to use this whole corner here just to create the nature reserve. So now that we have two entrances, what I want to start to do is we need to build out a path. So a city skylines park life layout. And what we'll do is I actually want to start on the beach. I know that's a weird place to start, but we want to kind of use the terrain to our advantage. Anybody raise your hand, raise your hand. Do you watch city planner? City planner loves using the terrain as his ally. And that's exactly what I kind of want to do here. So we want to respect the terrain as best as possible. So like when, like I mentioned, City Planner, he loves using this terrain tool just to see where we could follow it. Maybe we can, you know, build a bridge across the, the, the there's a little cliff opening, we'll call it. I don't know if cliff is the right word, but there you go. We, so we placed down the road and we just filled it in. Oh God, really good start. You know, I really respected the terrain so much that I filled it in. Anyways, let's get out of that terrain tool. And what we need to do is we need to build a road, well, a path. This is not a road. It is a path on the other side. And we're, we're going to need to create a bridge connection. So when you are building a bridge, just like you're building a road, you do need to elevate it. So what we're doing is we're elevating it as a bridge. And there we go. Like, I think that bridge looks super sharp. Like, I don't know what it is about those park life, um, the nature reserve path bridges but it looks absolutely amazing so what we'll do next is we'll continue now obviously we need to get to our entrance i mean that that's probably goal number one is to get to the entrance so what we'll do next is we'll keep building up our path and we, we will build another yeah we're gonna build right there and then we're gonna build it right towards our yep we're gonna we're, we're slowly 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 gonna build two bridges and it's going and we'll get to our entrance there you go there is bridge number one now bridge number two is going to cross over there and just making sure that we we need some place where our bridge can connect to so what i'm doing is i'm just creating a quick path where we can actually connect the bridge to our main gate and as you can see i'm doing it right there and that works per i love those bridges by the way i know i said that like two minutes ago but holy cow like they look amazing so the next step, we have that side bridge. So what we want to do, or the side bridge, wow. We have that side gate. So we do want to create a connection for that side gate. So we're, we have, we actually have a long ways to go. <laughs> wow. I didn't realize how like big this nature preserve was. Like when I put down that side gate, I, I mean, I sort of knew about it, but didn't really like, it didn't really click till literally just now. So you're just, you're seeing sports monkey live being surprised. So anyways, we are following the terrain as best as possible. We're not trying to completely destroy the, you know, the, we're just, we're trying to be friendly to the train and we're connecting it up. Perfect. So what we're going to focus on though, our main de detailing part is going to be to the left. We will have more things that we unlock and we can build it to the right, um, the right side where that side gate is. But for the most part where I'm actually adding this bridge and moving it over back to the main gate, we're going to focus on this side first. So, um, that's just something to keep in mind now. So don't make fun of me in the comments. All right. Like we're getting there. We're, we're slowly getting there. So one of the last things I had an epiphany about was I wanted to actually, you know, before, okay, I guess right now I am detailing, I am adding tents. So in order to add entertainment to this park, we are adding tents and a bonfire. So I'm just pairing them off because a lot of times there's bonfires and there's tents. You know, usually when you're camping, you have a bonfire literally in a very close vicinity to you. So I am adding a couple of those and good start so far. So now I had an epiphany. What now? So I do. So guys, just to let you know, I do a voiceover. And so basically I, I'm not smart enough to create and talk and speak at the same time. So sometimes errors like this do happen. So what I wanted to do next was I wanted to add a river and see right there. Like I wanted to fill that with water and have it a live water stream going down. Now you can see we're up on a hill, but you know, that was just my idea. And again, when you're doing voiceover, sometimes you forget what you do or what you did. Anyways, 
Wow, I can't believe I just admitted that. Not forget. I think forget's the wrong word. But anyways, what I want to do was I want to build one more bridge. We want one more bridge over to over. Ooh, that did not work out. Ooh, no, that's too big of a bridge. Okay, we, we only wanted to go across the river. We, there we go. There we go. And now put down, force down. There we go. So perfect. Awesome. Now you're going to be like, well, okay. So you have that river. It filled in a little bit from the actual river. How are you actually going to add more water and create almost like a mini waterfall? So now that we did a little bit more minor detailing, I do want to get into that. But so far, this, this nature reserve looks awesome. I love how unlevel it is and stuff like that. Holy cow. It looks really good so far. It looks really, really good. And I know the tents are really random, but wait till we fill everything in with trees and more detailing and it's going to be perfect. So, so far, so good. So I am going to speed this next part up. So I am, you, you will see me add water to this city skylines nature reserve. So what I wanted to do was a lot of this was, there's a lot of tearing and you can see that there's cliffside. So instead of showing off the tearing, I, I here we go. We're going to start to speed up everything. Everything is going to go three speed because you don't need me to, see, you don't need to see every single click. And <laughs> you don't need to see every single click when I'm detailing. So basically I'm adding more rocks and I'm adding more bushes to everything just to give it a little bit of a, t you know, just make it look a little bit more realistic, realistic and make it look a little bit better. I do like, I really do love this part of detailing. And now um, you will see more trees being added. Now I am looking for what's called an inlet. So right here, guys, if you have, the city skylines, oh God, what is it called? Emergency Disasters DLC. I'm doing that off the top of my head. Oh God, that's embarrassing that I don't remember. It's, yeah, the, the Natural Disasters DLC. You have, what you get a water inlet. Yes, so if you have a council, this is how you get an inlet or like a water, like this is how you get a water pump basically or just water feature in general. So what I want to do is I kind of wanted to detail around it. So like if you are there, you're kind of just not staring at it. <laughs> I mean, because otherwise I don't know how I'd be able to add water. But so far, you can see a lot of detailing has happened. Now I am letting some of the trees fill in over here. Um, I think if eventually we might need a lot more trees to be filled in over here, to be honest with you. But I, I feel like overall, though, this nature reserve looks absolutely amazing. And I am, yes, I am single-handedly placing down trees. I know how insane that is. Absolutely insane. So now that we have the nature reserve done, the, one of the last things Frank Sinclair we want to do, we have two more things we want to do. Frank wants to create a couple more overpasses for the future, for future expansion, which is absolutely okay. Now in real life, I, we would not d be doing this. In real life, there would not be a dead end. <laughs> we would not have this dead end, but this is for future, this is for our future expansion. So Frank wanted to get it done. We had $76,000 left and we actually, we actually, we're just waiting for our 5,000, um, you know, our 5,000 residential, um, you know, just hitting that milestone. So we have four of these in place for our future expansion, which is really, really nice. So there's, a, so people, not people, but our Sims have a way to get in and out of the city really, really, really nicely. Um, we do have a couple, you know, interchanges and stuff like that. So now let's get into a problem. Frank, we have no more room in our landfill. You can see that it is 100% filled. So Frank, you're the city planner. Let's go, dude. Like, you know, we have our mayor here. Our mayor, Ryan Fitzpatrick, is like, dude, this is your job, dude. He literally said, dude, dude, this is your job, <laughs> dude, 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 this is your job. Like you need to do, you need to fix this. So, um, Frank did design an area where we have additional services our additional trash services. So we have another landfill. But then we'll also we also built two recycling plants. So what we're doing right now is we have to empty out the original landfill site. So we can't even demolish the original site, and we have to wait till it's actually completely empty. So right there we added water, but you can see here those are recycling plants. You do have twelve garbage trucks, and they do actually produce power, which but it says zero megawatts. So whatever, I don't know. I don't know. 
Anyways, guys, so just to let you know, I did speed it up to, and we got to our 5,000 residents. I did not want you guys to wait literally eight years for, yeah, well, it wasn't eight years. It was literally a thousand residents and we didn't actually do anything while you guys were gone. So our next goal is 10,000, but well, oh wait, 7,502 big town, but busy town. We did unlock a few different things, leisure buildings, tourism, specialization, stuff like that. But the last thing I want to leave you with is I want to fill in this empty space. So what I did was I painted a pedestrian area. So this is a part of the city skylines plaza and prominence DLC. And I wanted to build a commercial zoning area where people can walk around and it just, just give a, give it a little bit more life. Like have like a, a city center without having a city center. Does that make sense? Is that good English? Have a city center without having a city center. Well, this city center is we want a lot of people to walk. And so what we're doing is we're just going to place this right down the middle and it works perfect. And we, oh, it just, I just love that we are able to just add this and you know, we, we did unlock it. So, I mean, but just overall, I'm going to love when this all fills in. And as you can see, we have multiple different paths, but I just chose to use that one path. So I know that's, that's what I was waiting for. What were these pedestrian paths and just to have it fill in, just look at, we have this commercial demand filled in, filled in, fill it in. And I'm actually really excited about this because just seeing the amount of people that are going to be walking and stuff like that. And the only issue I see, the only, only, only issue is, is that those crosswalks might create traffic. So we're going to have to see how that goes, but you know, we might have to get rid of some of the crosswalks, but we'll see though. But, um, overall very, very, very happy with this pedestrian area. And I just want to show you guys like, there we go at a, at a, at a connection there at a connection there, but we do need to keep track of all these pedestrian area crossings. Now we might need to get rid of the crosswalks, but we can keep the pedestrian entrances there. That's what, that's my thought process guys. So you can see all these people are walking. Oh my God. It looks so nice. Oh, I love it. I love being able to see all these people walk. So, so far guys, so good. We are going to let this fill in and I'm very excited about this city skylines plaza and promenades DLC. Oh, just look at the people walking and you can see, wow, we our retail stores. We have pizza, we have McDonald's, we have a bite bright. We have a marketplace like, wow. And wow, just, I really do like this. This is going to turn out great. So guys, let's just do a recap of Frank Sinclair and what he did. So let's drive in. Okay. You have one intersection, one overpass, two intersections and another intersection overpass and holy cow this just turned out absolutely amazing so this is what we have so far this is bayview heights so far ryan fitzpatrick mayor ryan fitzpatrick and our lovely city planner frank sinclair they, they have done a fantastic job working together like our high school and our elementary school and you know, just everything in general is just working out really, really well. Like here is our detailed nature reserve. Like, oh my God, I just can't wait to fill that in. There's our inlet with the water. Now it does look a little funky, but I'm going to let it pass for now. But like, look at this view of our nature reserve. Like you have the mountains in the background, the lake. It just looks absolutely awesome. I do love those bridges. Now I might have to, ooh, I might have to mess with some of the heights. And you can see there, I did even some of the heights of some of our bridges, but we'll fix it. We'll fix it. I did fix the ramp itself to the right, but now I, I can level that out later. But thank you guys for watching. Seriously, I appreciate each and every one of you for watching my video. Please hit that like button. If you did find value in this content, you know, please make sure you, you subscribe. It is free. So thank you guys for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'm super excited about our next episode of Bayview, Bayview Heights. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And look at that. Our intersection is working great. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.